And the next poem is a glossa uh, on four lines from Sylvia Plath's poem, Tulips. And I'll read her four lines. And I am aware of my heart. It opens and closes its bowl of red blooms out of sheer love of me. The water I taste is warm and salt like the sea and comes from a country as far away as hell. A wild indolence, a disease too indolent to kill quickly. Its furtive cells loll in the lymphoid jungle, beasts lost in the guile of sloth. They thrive in the wilds of my body, fatten on its nectar, nudge lungs and gut, inch towards conquest. Cells divide and divide again, their rows of spawn gluttonous and sprawling. In the cramped cage, I cohabit with predators. I am learning my captive body, how it slows, and I am aware of my heart. It opens and closes like a moth orchid, its smothering lushness. In the welcome desert of the chemo clinic, I am cocooned by the calm of nurses and the steady drip of the drug, a machete that cuts back serpentine vines as it travels rivers of blood. Each session, my throat swells and nurses descend with machinery measure vital signs. Fear, its teeth clamped on my throat, its pelt reeking of other quarry. I won't be its next kill. My body seals its bowl of red blooms out of sheer love of me. Sleep is a savage landscape. How to live the vigilance of prey, haunted by nightmare, by dangerous animals, Suddenly awake, aware of dreaming, yet certain the snake or the jaguar is under the bed. I search with a flashlight, naked and on my knees. My bedroom now another kind of cage, a jungle that suffocates, its growth untamable. I am parched and under siege. The weather, the water I taste is warm and salt like the sea. It brings no comfort, unlike the cold country of home. Lake Superior, my fresh water womb. I was once this land's untamed child. Its bleak beauty will cradle my ashes. I have heard my death howl across the lake, swallowed by a stand of silver birch, where it has hidden for years. Death taunts me every time leaves rustle show their silver gray underside. The water here is boreal, hard as the earth, and comes from a country far away as health. The water, that smoky sky is taking it out of my throat. The third uh, poem I'm gonna read is also set in um, on the edge of Lake Superior, where I grew up in northwestern Ontario. And it'll always be my home ground. Blind to me. Will my after image shimmer in the kitchen window, near the wooden swing, on the porch? My fingerprints remain. How tightly I hang on as the untamed, its muck and, and its musk, multiply among ruins. A house with broken locks, my body has been breached. Feral cells have squatted, their dark chemistry unleashed in swollen lymph nodes, damp chambers. My defenses outwitted, depleted by earlier intruders. Under a waning moon, I glide high above an unforgiving lake watch a younger self float on her back in our old freshwater lair. Superior's deep cold is so familiar, it is a kind of warmth. The Norway spruce and poplar are aloof. On the shore, she scavenges for wild blueberries and Saskatoons. 
I am flooded by a longing to find a stillness in the flux, to inhabit more of my life's rooms. I have lived in too few of them, stayed in its hallways, protected by the thick carapace of survival. My body a failing refuge, I run towards something that recedes into the forest. The silver eyes of birches blind to me. And back on the West Coast now, um, my morning ritual, early morning ritual is a walk that includes Macaulay Point in Esquimalt, which is probably my favorite piece of land uh, in this area. On the cusp, a Pacific opera, all tumult and spume, the rocky spit abides its tempo geologic. Across the strait, the Olympic mountains, a witness for millennia. On the breakwater, two teens, wind-filled jackets held open like wings, test how far they can lean, stay upright. Their desire kindled for the gift of flight. What quickens in me? A longing to molt, shed this body, weighted down by decay, memory fragments, my repertoire of habits and disguises, to be elemental, buffeted and held by feldspar, gale, salt water. And still at Macaulay Point, for a moment, radiance. The Olympic peaks quicken, rise as if pulled by a rope of early light. A herd of three black buffalo clouds charges the rising sun. Across the Strait of Juan de Fuca at Macaulay Point, I walk, dark speck, fingered by light, swathed in layers, I resist light's runaway train as it hurdles past, knocks me to my knees, peels me naked on Fleming Beach, coaxes from my animal body for a moment, the radiance guttering under cancer's nightfall. Uh, this next poem is, the source of it is a mystery to me, and I really like that. <laughs> I have no idea where this came from. The Night Nurses. In Sleep's Hospital, the day staff has been taken hostage. The night nurse, a vixen, prowls the ward in soot black stockings, uniform ablaze, red cross dark at the shoulder. Her bark, a piercing nocturne. She dens in my malignant lymph nodes, concocts potions for me. Scent nests of bloodied vole, scat, her kit's milk-stained breath. Her aid, the arctic fox, dens in my bones, curled up in the polar desert of the marrow. And several months ago, I took a mindfulness course at the cancer clinic. And uh, this is the final poem I'll read that came out of the walk that we took the last day in a, a little park I'd never known existed behind the cancer clinic. <clears throat> cancer clinic mindfulness walk. The path narrow and muddy, we walk single file in silence on the edge of an old orchard, beside Bowker Creek, as it speaks in tongues. A bitter cherry tree's eight trunks bow to the water. Nearby, a full bucket of cigarette butts, a crushed can of Molson Pilsner. 
A black lab gambles on the open field, its tail both rudder and joystick. I leave the path, drawn to a circle of apple trees. Wraiths, they stand their ground, lift skeletal limbs. Thank you.